Tonight, the family of ACSI student Jethro Poir remember him as a loving son, an exemplary student, a caring friend. A woman accused of murdering her daughter in a Chin Sui Road flat now also faces abuse charges involving four other children. And a Malaysian man who breached a stay-home notice is the first to have his PR status revoked for flouting COVID-19 rules. This is The Straits Times News Night. I'm Dylan Ang. Good evening, I'm Chao Suan. The family of the ACS independent student who died after an accident at Safra Yishun have paid tribute to the 15-year-old. He was the only child. In a statement issued to the Straits Times, Jethro Poir's family said he was a loving son, an exemplary student, a caring friend. The family said he has lived such an impactful and fruitful life. Short as it may be, more importantly, it was very purposeful and completed. They have requested privacy and said they were still in shock and grieving. Jethro Poir died yesterday after an accident at Safra Ishun on Wednesday. The police said he lost his footing during a high element activity and at lost consciousness was suspended by the safety harness in mid-air. He was taking part in a school activity organised by Camelot, an outdoor adventure learning company, which is now assisting in investigations. No foul play has been suggested. In the last hour in a Facebook post, Education Minister Lawrence Wong expressed his condolences to the family, friends and classmates of Jethro Poir. He said, my thoughts and prayers are with all of you during these difficult times. In an update to the gruesome murder case, where a child's remains were found in a pot in a Chinsui Road flat two years ago, the child's mother is said to have abused four other children. When her two-year-old daughter died, the woman who has been accused of murder and her husband allegedly burned the girl's body before concealing the remains inside a metal pot. The body was only found five years later in 2019. It emerged today that the woman is facing more charges, including multiple counts of abuse involving four other children. The various abuses include slapping and punching the children, leaving them without adequate food and water, as well as hitting them with a variety of objects, such as a hanger and a cane. It is unclear how the children were related to her. Also in the news tonight, the first case in Singapore of a person losing their PR status for breaching COVID-19 rules. Malaysian national Chong Tet Cho was convicted of leaving his hostel multiple times during his stay-home notice and lost his permanent residency status. He had left his homes to run errands such as to buy food and top up the credit store in his mobile phone. Now, if you're looking to visit Chinatown this weekend, do take note that the street light-up will be turned off on Saturday and Sunday and on the eve of Chinese New Year on February 11th. Access to popular areas like Pagoda and Tringanu Street may also be restricted during peak hours on weekends. And the latest in safe management measures breaches, three F&B outlets, Bombu in Kandahar Street, Dots Buddy in BT Road and Drinks Emporium in Club Street have been ordered to close after breaching COVID-19 rules. Nine other establishments, including Chinatown Seafood in Trenganu Street and Baoding in Mosque Street, were fined $1,000 each for various breaches, which include allowing diners to play billiard and pool games on their premises. Meanwhile, 74 people have been fined for flouting COVID-19 rules at parks and beaches. Two groups comprising more than 20 people each are also under investigation for allegedly gathering at East Coast Park and Changi Beach Park. Now for the COVID-19 situation in Singapore, 25 new infections were reported today. Among them were two locally transmitted ones, one in a foreign worker dormitory and the other in the community. It's the first dorm case since January 16. Helping workers and businesses to adapt, innovate and grow will be a key priority for Budget 2021. Deputy Prime Minister and Finance Minister Heng Swee Keat said that while Singapore deals with the present pandemic, it must also prepare for a different world post-COVID. Mr Heng will deliver his budget statement on February 16th. We have so far averted the worst of the fallout, but the road to recovery will be uneven and highly uncertain. We will continue to support our workers and companies, especially those in hard-hit sectors. But we must also continue to press on with economic transformation, which we started five years ago.
Let's take a look at what's been trending on social media today. The late Chadwick Boseman has earned double nominations at the Screen Actors Guild Awards, boosting hopes of posthumous Oscars glory for the trailblazing Black Panther star. Boseman is nominated for his roles in 1920s blues drama Ma Rainey's Black Bottom and as a Vietnam War soldier in The Five Bloods. If you didn't know, while less high profile than the Golden Globes, the SAG Awards are seen as a stronger indicator of Oscars glory. Only two actors have ever posthumously won Oscars, Heath Ledger for 2008 The Dark Knight and Peter Finch for 1976's Network. Both the SAG Awards and Oscars will take place in April. Shining a light on Singapore talent, singer Stephanie San dropped a surprise music video last night for a new song, What Remains. And it's not just any music video. The Portland music video features top local actor Christopher Lee, who had been filming a drama series in Taiwan late last year. He was asked by the singer to star in the music video while he was there. In an Instagram post on Thursday, San thanked him for his support and said, the script seems challenging, but he made it look effortless. In sports, Japanese tactician Tatsuma Yoshida will continue his role as head coach of the Singapore football men's national team until December 2022. FAS announced the 46-year-old's contract extension, which will see him lead the line through the next edition of the AFF Suzuki Cup, as well as the remainder of the team's World Cup qualification campaign. FAS General Secretary Yazin Buhari spoke to Newsnight about the impact Tatsuma has had since arriving in 2019. And I think Tatsuma, what he has brought to the team is a belief. A belief that, you know, we could be a small nation, we could be a nation that perhaps uh, may not be that high up in the Asian rankings, but we can take on the field and have the belief that we will be able to get a result or two. And that's what he has done. Um, from tangible results, um, it's the World Cup qualifiers. And obviously, you know, we will try our best. And Tatsuma wants to be able to do his best, uh, get the best out of the team to go into the next round. But we do have Asian Cup qualification that will pull through right after. And obviously with the Suzuki Cup at the end of the year, it is something that we had started planning for uh, way before uh, COVID had disrupted the original schedule and he's got his eyes firmly set on that. Before we go, Suen, with Chinese New Year just around the corner, I can safely tell you that I'm expecting to put on just a couple of extra kilos. I know, pineapple tarts, love letters. <laughs> just thinking about it makes me hungry. Now, if you're looking to burn off those extra calories though, the Singapore Sports Hub has a wide variety of activities on offer, including a hot run. The 888-metre run will be held around the 100-plus promenade from February 6 to the 26th and the first 88 participants to complete will receive a festive FNN goodie bag. A special light show in auspicious red and yellow colours will also run from 7 to 11pm between February 7 and 19. And that wraps up the Straits Times News Night. Do visit straitstimes.com to see more news and videos. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel by hitting the button below. Have a great weekend. See you next Monday.